Right, good morning, grade 12s. Um, here we go with question number three from your September. Um, cat, your prep paper. That was paper number one. Okay, so we've done question one and two. We're going to scroll down now and we're going to look at question number three. Hope you guys are all with me so far. Um, you, you would have seen by this time I've uploaded the theory, uh, well, some of the theory answers as well. So, yes, please use all of these resources to prepare for your finals. This is really um, probably 60 to 70 percent of your final paper is going to be on things similar to this, worded similar to this as well. So you do want to take note of that. So let's look at question number three. It says various courses will be offered to the community members and they have to register for them. A spreadsheet, three underscore attendees, has been created to record all the attendees. Open the spreadsheet and work in the attendee info worksheet. So let us go there. Okay, so there it is, three underscore attendees. I want to open that up. While it's opening, let's have a look at what needs to be done. So first things first, they want us to, in 3.1, improve the readability. Let's just sit down a bit. Okay. So improve the readability of the worksheet by applying the following formatting features to the worksheet. They want us to merge and center those particular rows. They want us to align the headings in A8 to G8 horizontally and vertically. And then use the word processing feature to ensure that the contents in row 1 to 8 remain on the screen when the user scrolls down. In other words, that's going to be the freeze pane um, feature. So, yeah, at least now we know what to do in 3.1. So let's go back to our spreadsheet and let's go and have a look at what needs to be done. So let me just zoom in here. And then we're going to go up to the top. Right. So let's go back again. It says merge and center rows A1 to X2. So I'm going to go to A1. Scroll over. A1 over here over to what do they say x2 okay x x2 right so all i'm going to do is just highlight those cells and click on merge and center that's done you'll see how the background changes you'll see that the text moves to the center because i've merged all those cells and applied a centering as well let's go back so i've got my one mark that's fine align the headings in a8 to g8 so where are we? Um, a, A8 to G8, right? They want us to align that horizontally and vertically. So all I've got to do is go up to home, go to the alignment section, and over here, you can see this is my center alignment for both, okay? So this is your horizontal alignment. This is your vertical alignment. So you select center on both of them, and that means that this is now aligned horizontally and vertically. Okay, so we've got our mark there. In 3.1.3, they want us to, let's see, um, ensure the contents in rows 1 to 8. Rows 1 to 8. Um, remain on the screen when the user scrolls down. So remember I said to you it's going to be freeze panes. So we can actually just go and select those rows. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the first row. I'm going to hold the shift button down and then click on row 8. So that's going to select everything from row 1 to row 8. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up over here and I'm going to go to my view tab. There's freeze panes. I'm going to click on the little down arrow and select freeze panes. So if it's done correctly, when I scroll down, do you see what's what's happening there? All right, row 1 to 8, that is all intact there. Right? So it's not moving down, and that is exactly what we want. Then they say to us, use a function in cell G7 to add today's date and in this format. Okay, so let's go find, what is it, G7? Uh, G7, no, G7 over there. Okay, now we know we have two formulas. We have equals today, open and close bracket, and that's going to give us today's date. But what format do they want it? They want it year. They want it like the full year. Month, they want four items there for month and two for day. So I've got four for year, which is fine. Don't have four for month. Okay, so what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to go to format cells. And then I'm going to go under the number tab and I'm going to go check date. Okay. So what do I want? Uh, it's four. I want four, 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 two. Okay. Now, if it's not there, we're going to have to go to custom. Um, and then we're going to go select under custom what we want. So yeah, you can see it's year, year. We want month, 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 month. So I'm going to type in month, month. You can see how that changes over there. And then I'm going to click OK. Now you'll see it, it might do this, but we know that this is an error because the cell is not big enough. So I adjust my cell and there you go, folks. Um, we've got 2021 as the year. One, two, three, four. We've got September. In other words, these four just means that the full name of the month must display. And then two digits for the date. So it's the 20th of September, 20. 21 right and that's um, our first three marks plus these two for 3.2 so that's taking us up to five marks thus far 3.3 says use a suitable function in cell b9 so let's go to cell b9 okay and what do they say um, to add a suitable title for the attendee the male attendees must have mr as their title and the female attendees must have miss. So let's, let's have a look at this. How are we going to know whether it's a male attendee or a female attendee? Okay. We'll know this because, have a look at this, title, first name, last name, email, because of the gender. So this is going to be the basis for our criteria. Because now what are we using? We are essentially using an if statement. And we are going to say if in cell F9, now why am I choosing F9? Simply because that tells me whether the person's a male or a female. So if in cell N, uh, sorry, F9, um, it equals, and I'm going to put in inverted commas M. In other words, if cell M9 equals male, comma, what must happen? It must display the word Mr. If it doesn't, it must display Miss. Okay, I hope I hope you guys are with me. All right? Sorry, let me just put a full stop in there because that's what they want. And I close my bracket. So again, please look at the formula. If whatever is in cell F9 is equal to M. So if it is an M. What must display here? Mr. If it's not an M, it must display Miss. I hit enter. Is anything wrong? Let's have a look at this. Ah, okay. This is the other version of Office. Now, if you've got 2010 or so, it'll take the comma. Um, sometimes in the later versions, it will need the semicolon. So please just check that when it comes to... Sorry. That should be fine. There we go. Okay. So please, I'm using Office 2016. So that's why it's changed from using commas to using semicolon. So please, it just depends on, on the version that you are using. So when I hit enter, you can see because it's male. Well, let's, let's go and test it. Let's pull it down. And there you'll see it'll change. It goes miss because it's an F. Miss, F, Mr. Because it's male. All right. So you can also see that that is worth three marks because when we look at our formula, you can see for using the if statement for putting the correct criteria in and what must and what the outcome must be. That's how you get your three marks. OK, let's move on. 3.4. Add a function in cell S10. So let's go to S10. Go over to S10. Where are we? S10. Okay. What do they want to happen? To calculate the number of courses Iwi Langhorn will attend. Okay. So let me just zoom out here. So we've got old Langhorn, Evie Langhorn, 
and we've seen that the individual if we just scroll through we can see where the x is the number of courses now if i just use my eyes and just go through i can see one two three so i already know what the answer must be please don't do this you just type in the number three okay <laughs> because we don't mark it like that according to the answer we click on there to see what the formula is that you're using so obviously if i'm going to be counting i'm going to use my equals count formula however again because it needs to pick up a criteria i've now got to use count if and open my bracket so what am i saying well i wanted to count if in this range and what is the range the range is going to be for every langhorn this whole section here because this will indicate which courses the individual is doing so i've got my range in there which is h10 to r 10 sorry i'm not sure if you can see that over there and then i'm going to put in my semicolon again depending on your version it might be just a comma and what must be in there it must count all those that have an x now you'll see i use inverted commas because it's text um, and then i just hit enter now you can see when i typed it in it was three when i put in the formula it's three but when i click on this just remember over here up in your formula bar that's what we mark on so we see did you use count if yes is your range correct yes is your criteria correct yes it is and that is how you get your three marks then 3.5 the amount for each course is in cell v7 so v7 the courses are 20 rand each beautifully cheap courses <laughs> in cell u11 u11 they want us to calculate the total amount Bambi Mules will be paying for his courses. Um, make sure that the formula will work correctly when copied down. Three marks. Okay, so again here, yeah, what do we want to do? We are now doing a simple multiplication formula because we want to look at which courses he's taking. And we want, we over here, we already know the number of courses, which is four. So all we want to really do is take that and we want to multiply that by whatever the cost of the course is. So what would usually be the case is we will go equals. We will click on the number of courses, put a little star in place to say multiply. And we would click on um, the value of the course and hit enter. Now there's nothing wrong with that. However, they did say make sure that the formula will work correctly when copied down and if i use this going down you're going to see at some point i'm going to get some errors now why is that if you look at the first one it says s11 times v7 right so just s11 times v7 that's that's fine but then what happens over here s12 that would be this one over here times what is it, it should be v12 because if we don't put and i think you'll remember this absolute referencing it means that as we move down um, over here in terms of multiplying the cells it's going to move down here as well so what i have to then go and do is put in my absolute cell referencing which is my dollar signs in front of the uh, column reference and in front of the row reference hit enter the Please, the answer doesn't change. All that's going to happen now, if we look at our formula over here, all that's going to happen, just move this in, is that when I copy this down, the V7 is not going to change. So referencing to that particular cell is not going to change. And you can see as I pull that down, it goes back to normal to what it should be. Okay, Because in each one of these cases, you can see up here, it's V7, it's V7, v7 okay so please don't forget the cell referencing when they tell you to make sure that the formula will be copied down correctly all right 3.6 barnabas decided to do all 11 courses and has paid 75 percent of the total amount in cell v13 calculate the amount paid by barnabas okay so i just want to unfreeze these panes quickly so i can have flexibility here right let's move over to v13 cell v13 
they want me to put in a formula um, to calculate the amount paid by Barnabas because Barnabas has paid how much? 75%. Okay, so Barnabas is doing 11 courses. We know it's going to be times 20 rand, so that's the amount that he has to pay. But he's only paid 75% of that. So all we're going to do is say equals, we're going to click on that cell, and we're going to multiply that. We can do it two ways, grade 12. So we can go 0 0.75 which is 75%, or for those of you who like to do maths, we can go 75 divided by 100. Now, why is it going to work? Because of bod mass, okay? I'm not a maths person, <laughs> but I'll never forget bod mass, right? Brackets of division, multiplication, addition, subtraction, all these lovely things. And we'll still get the same answer. Now, it doesn't matter which way you do it, but I generally prefer the 0 0.75 now that's 75 percent if it was 10 percent it would be 0 comma 10 if it's five percent it's 0 comma 05 okay so don't forget that 75 percent hit enter and there's my answer as quick as that i've got my two marks All right so 3.7 says use a word processing feature in column d in the last name so we want to go in here to automatically highlight with the color of your choice any person who does not have a laptop so they want us to highlight here based on what we see seen over here now normally with conditional formatting what happens we go in here we go up to conditional formatting we say highlight cell rules and i'm just going to use for example we'll go equal to and we'll say well equal to the word no it fills it with the color of our choice and we click ok and we're usually happy with that this one is different in that we need to highlight these ones here, this column, based on what's in this one. Okay, so let's take it step by step. What's step number one? We need to highlight the cells. We're going to highlight our cells over here and we can see that's what that's D9 to about D108. Okay. Now we do the same thing. We go up to conditional formatting. This time we're going to go to new rule. And we're going to use or select use a formula to determine which cells to format. And our formula is going to read equals. When we put in a formula here, we're going to put in the dollar before dollar and then referencing T9, which is the cell over here. And what must it match up to those who don't have a laptop? So it must equal no. Okay. So equals dollar because we put in our formula into our conditional formatting what must the formula be well it's checking cell t9 um, to see if there's a no in place over there formatting they say we want, we can you know make it a color of our choice i'm just going to use blue and i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click ok again right and now you can see what has happened here if this does not display people if it does not change color I want you to do the following for me. I want you to highlight those cells again. I want you to go to conditional formatting and manage rules. And in manage rules, you want to check that your formula is correct. The formatting, again, you can make it whatever color, but just make sure it applies to the correct um, cell range. So let's say, for example, I change that to E. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, and I hit enter. Can you see what happens? This does not get highlighted, but this gets highlighted. Okay, so please just make sure um, that not only have you selected the correct range, sorry, put in the correct formula, but you've applied it um, based on the correct range as well. Okay, next one 3.8. The attendees are grouped into four teams depending on how many courses they do. Five courses and less are greens. Eight courses and less are blues. Ten courses and less are reds. And then more than ten courses are yellows. Okay. So unfortunately, we know exactly what this is. Um, insert a function in cell W9. Let's go over. We know it's our friend, the nested if. <laughs> yes. 
um, in which team uh, to determine in which team Ogdon Poly is. Oh, some weird names here. Uh, copy the formula to other cells. So we're going to go and we're going to start our nested if, right? Because we have a number of criteria. It's like if it's five courses and less. So if five and, and less, it must be green. If eight and less, if 10. Now, please bear something in mind here. If we say in five courses and less, it means it must e be equal to five and less than five. Equal to eight and less than eight. Equal to 10 and less than 10. But in this case over here, it must be more than, not equal to, more than 10. So let's go and do this. Let me just zoom in here so that you can see exactly what's going on. Okay. So we start with our nested if. It always starts with our equals if. So we know we have that in place. Remember, as I go through this, I'm going to use semicolons. You are going to probably just be using commas depending on your version of Office. So we're saying here if cell S9, because we're looking at the number of courses, remember? If cell S9, and here we go now, is less than or equal to, what's the first one? Five, right? If it matches that, what must display? Greens. Remember, if we go back here, five courses and less are greens. Then I'm going to separate that with a semicolon. And the next one, I start my if again. If, open my bracket, S9 is less than or equal to 8, what must display? Blues. I hope we're still together. Semicolon. Next one, if, open bracket, S9 is less than or equal to 10, what's going to happen? It must display reds. And folks, semicolon, that then means I've got green, blue, and red. Green, blue, and red, which then means if it's not one of these three, the only one left is it must display yellow. So remember our last one, doesn't need an if because if it's not any of the others it must show yellow or display yellow now please remember when it comes to closing our brackets you'll see i'm going to close three brackets and they all have different colors why the black bracket is closed here you can see it's open there this one like a reddish burgundyish color open there closed there the purple one is open closed for every bracket that you open you must close it we hit enter right so they tell us there is a problem let's see where our problem is s9 maybe it's these commas again right let's go through let me just change the commas to semicolons see if that's my issue with 2016 Yes, that is my... So you can see with 2016, I can't use these commas. I've got to use semicolons. And if I move this down, you can see it changes. Greens, yellow, greens, yellow. Let's see if there are any reds. Greens, blue. But you can see that it does change. Okay? So there we've got our four marks for 3.8. All right, we're getting close <laughs> right 3.9 the organizers decided to give a discount to attendees who own a laptop and have already paid 50 rand deposit insert a function in cell x9 x9 um, to display the text discount for people who do qualify for a discount and leave the cell blank for those who do not qualify okay so again, we're going to have um, an if statement here, but it's going to be slightly different now because I'm looking at those who paid a deposit, right? So if they've paid a deposit, that is fine. But now I need it to display the word discount as well. Okay, so this, this becomes a little bit difficult. We need now to use the if and the and function okay so i'm using my if i'm opening my bracket and then i've got to put my and function inside of it 
and my and function is particularly um sorry targeted at the following t9 equals yes and what is that based on so first of all is there a laptop available right yes there is a laptop available um then have they paid in cell v cell v9 have they paid their 50 rand deposit so in cell v9 is there a number that is equal to or greater than 50. i hope you see where i'm going i'm gonna i'm gonna go through this again so we're putting in an if statement now we know with an if statement we must have a criteria this and section becomes our criteria and if it matches the criteria, what must it display? It must display the word discount. And I'm going to close my bracket. However, I'm going to have a problem. Why? Because, again, with 2016, I need my semicolon. But that's not the main thing I need you to understand. I want you to have a look at this. In order for us to do this, they are saying three things. They want to give a discount, so discount is the first thing, to attendees who own a laptop and who have already paid the 50 Rand deposit. So it's three things that we've got going here. We must see if, there is a, if the person has a laptop. Does this first person have one? No. Do they have the 50 or they have they paid the deposit? Yes. Only when these two match up must it display discount. So here, for example, this one has got a yes, but it's only paid 30 rand. This one has yes. Okay, let's, let's go down. Let's see if there's someone. Uh, no, yeah, here we go. Okay, so there's somebody who's got a yes and a 50 rand, which means they'll get the discount, right? So the and function is basically saying, listen, inside this if statement, we are adding this formula. This whole formula becomes a criteria for your if statement. Um, and then you hit enter and it should give you. Ah, oh, sorry, not false. <laughs> Forgot to put that in. Uh, should give me a blank, right? So you'll see in here, if it matches the criteria, what must it display discount? If it doesn't match the criteria, it must display a blank cell so we just use our inverted commas nothing in between and that'll display a blank cell so let's pull this down let's see all the way uh, what's happening uh, is anyone gonna get the discount let's go let's go let's go and there's one person that gets the discount why because according to this they've got a yes they've got the 50 rand so they match the criteria. If they don't, it must display blank. There's a couple of others that also have the discount. Okay. So we're going to go to that formula again. If, and then this criteria becomes the and. Right. So we say an and if T49, because usually there's only one criteria. Like if it does something, if it matches this, this is what it must display. But we say now it's got to do two things in order to actually match up. Right. Next one, so that's our four marks. Insert a functional formula in cell G triple one. Let's go to G triple one. G triple one. Here we go. Okay, I think these are the last few. To determine and display the current age of the last person, Nicole. This function or formula must give the correct age, even if the current date changes Ooh, okay so we know that we've got two date formulas we've got equals today open and close bracket and we've got equals now open and close bracket. whoa equal man equals now open and close bracket and let me just make that larger the one will give us the date the other one will give us the date and time so we don't need now right we're throwing that out but we want to use equals today we're looking at the last person that they said here that is nicole we've even got the individuals i'm assuming this is the yeah date of birth okay so we want to use the function year 
So we're going to go equals here. We're going to open up our bracket. And we're going to put in today's date, right? Remember, we need to put in the formula for today's date. So equals today. What do we want to do with that? We want to subtract that. So I'm going to close that. We want to subtract that formula from here and whatever is in cell G108. Can you, can you see what I'm doing? We're using the year function one year subtracting from another year okay i hit enter and there i've got 15. why because it's taking today's date and it's subtracting it from whatever is in g108 now this will update automatically again why because today whether you open it tomorrow or the following day it'll still be today i know that's weird some sci-fi movie but today is today any day you open it whether it's tomorrow in the future or <laughs> anything like that it still remains today g108 will give us whatever is in that cell and this is how we make sure that not only have we put in a function to calculate our age but that it will update as time goes on as well right so there we have that then they want us to look at the number of people who attended the budget intermediate course is that the next one Insert a lookup function in cell G113 to determine how many attendees attended the budget intermediate course. Use the information in the statistics worksheet. So here we've got the statistics worksheet. You can see we've got that over there. So obviously we are going to use our lookup function. So we can go to formulas. Um, we can go to insert function. And in this case, I'm going to use an H lookup. I'm going to go through with the V lookup as well so you can see the difference. Um, how many people attended the budget intermediate course? So there's our budget. So we're saying our lookup value is F1. Why? Because we want to take that and see how many people attended that course. The table array, where is that table array located? That is going to be A1. Sorry, in the statistics, that's going to be um, A1 to K2, in other words, we're going to look through this whole table over here to see how many people attended that. Our row index number, in other words, which row are we looking in? We're looking in row 1? No, we're looking in row 2. Okay, and we are looking at saying false to give us our exact answer, and we know that answer is 19. So we click OK. And there we've got 19. Okay, now people, I do understand that when you look at this, you can see it does say 19, but they want a formula in here that's going to do that. Okay, um, let me do a formula in here. Let me use the V lookup so you can see the difference, if there is any. Let's go to statistics. We say our lookup value is budget. Why? Because we want to check for the number of people who did the budget course, our table array is going to be a1 to k2 our column ah there's the problem there's the problem i don't i can't look into another column can i right so v lookup does the looking up if i can put it that way when things are displayed vertically my h lookup i use when things are displayed horizontally okay so this is displayed horizontally not vertical so if i have to say column index number two it's going to be looking into this column it's not going to be looking into the rows so please that's why i'm going to cancel that's why i wanted to show you this to show you the difference between h lookup and v lookup our h lookup um, checks the rows and our v lookup checks columns okay so that's very important to know which one to use they work exactly the same but it's just you'll indicate whether it's going to be for columns or rows depending on what they're asking you beautiful right insert a function in cell g115 to calculate the total amount that will be paid by attendees who own a laptop so let's go to g115 this should be a very simple one we're going to use a sum if function to do what to calculate the total amount that will be paid by attendees who own a laptop. Now, where do we see all of this? 
let's go over and we're looking at those who own a laptop yes um so we're looking at cell t10 t9 all the way down and we want to see those who own a laptop which means that there's going to be a criteria here of yes or no right if there is yes then we need to look at column u to then add up um, or to bring in what they are owing okay i hope you're with me <laughs> let's go over so we're saying it must add things up if in cell in the range t10 to t108 and what is that criteria it must match up with the word yes if it does it must add up everything from u 10 through to u108 right so what that is going to do it's going to look through this range t10 to t108 it's going to take all those who have a yes or have indicated a yes and it's going to add up all those amounts in column u I'm going to go through this again it works out to 1800 so what it does is the formula is going to go look in column t that person said yes it looks up in column u what's the amount 60 rand the next one yes 60 rand so it's going to be 60 plus 60 plus 160 and it's going to go all the way through that so it uses this as the criteria if it matches the criteria which was yes it adds up all the totals from this column and that is how we actually then get to our answer so there you can see equal sum if open bracket t10 to t108 the criteria is yes if it matches the criteria it must then add it up or do the sum remember it sums things up if it matches the criteria good All right i hope you guys are with me and the last one the very last one a graph is being created in the statistics worksheet we saw that earlier yes there's the graph modify the graph as follows All right they want us to um, format the chart area of the graph by adding the picture 3d digital Okay, so we, we have a number of things that we, sorry, that we can do. You can see um, I've got my little plus to add chart elements. I can do chart styles, you know, etc. So let's go uh, see what we have over here. You can see we've got our styles. We can do filters. We can do all these lovely things. I'm just going to right click on the chart itself and I'm going to go format chart area why because it's 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 going to bring up a number of options for me you can see i can change the border what i want to do is change the full and i want to change it because i need a picture where is that picture that picture is located inside my data folder so i'm going to go to my desktop i think mine is there september and what did they say 3d literacy here we go done so what did i do all I did, I'm going to close this again. I right clicked on my chart. I went down to format chart area, full picture, and I inserted the picture. That is one mark. Okay, they want me to add it as a background picture. They want me to set now for another mark, set the transparency of the picture to 50%. So transparency over here, and I'm going to go to 50%. There you can see that has changed use a filter option to remove the two courses type in a letter and budget okay so where's my filter well i've got my filter over here and they want me to remove type in a letter and budget so let's go filter type in a letter and budget and i click apply and that has been done okay next one add a data call out label to the most popular course and then use the spreadsheet feature to move the graph to a new worksheet called graph so let me just do that new worksheet we're going to right click on it rename it we're going to call it graph and then we're going to copy this we can even cut it and we can paste it over here now just going to use that and then there we go Okay, so the only thing we need to do now is to add 
um, what they mentioned here, which was the data callout label to the most popular course. Now, if we look at our chart, we can see which is the most popular course, which is Know Your Smartphone. We can see it's the most popular by far. So all we need to do is click on it. We can click on it twice until it's the only one that's selected. You can see I can go and add here. What I'm going to add is a data label, but the option that I've got further than that is a data call out label. And you can see immediately there it displays and there I've got it. Okay. So please remember, um, we can go and do this. We can add format data labels if you want to do it differently. Um, but you can see it's as simple as me clicking on that, adding a chart element, going to my data labels, and then selecting data callout. Okay. And grade 12s, that is it for our 46 marks for question number three. Woo! I know there was a long one, um, but there's a lot of detail in there. Go through it. Go through everything, practice it um, so that it becomes, you know, second nature to you. So, yeah, thank you for being with me on this video. I'm going to see you in question number four, where we start moving into, I think it is, let me just have a look here. Yes, it is databases. So databases will be question uh, number four, and then question five, we move into HTML. I'll see you then.